three, you all make an exception. Well, thank you for doing that. Whoa! Watch it, dude! Hey, do I know you? Are you on OK Cupid? I mean, I'm not really, but my friends have made me a profile on a dare. Never mind. Are you sure we haven't hooked up before? I'm Jesse. I have that freckle on my boob that looks like a third nipple. Hold on, let me show you. Hold my toe. How did the whole process start? Um, so I was, you know, um, I was in New York City this summer. And I was out at like this douchey club and I was dancing with my friends and they have these guys in New York. I don't, I've only found them in New York, but they're like your boyfriends for the night. Like yeah. they kind of show up, they buy you a bunch of drinks and then they just like, go, like, it's weird. They don't even like necessarily try to sleep with you, but like, they're just like, I don't know. It's very weird. But I was like poor and I was like, whatever, you know, you can buy me dinner and whatever. But I was like dancing with my friends and then all of a sudden this guy just slaps me on the butt. Like when I'm going to the dance floor and I was like. I was like really taken aback by it because I don't know, like when somebody, you know, like when you're flirting with a guy and it's like, you know, whatever. And he like touch you touch him and he touches you or there's some kind of connection. It's totally different than when you're just like, you you know, it's like you're sneaking boxing. up behind you in a club. Right. And it's like, and I feel the same way with like when guys look at me on the street, it's so, I don't know, to me, it's like, it's so traumatic for me and maybe because of my past experiences, but it's like, it's like, this is not your body. This is my body. And when you do that, it makes me feel like it's, it makes me feel like it's not my body. So I just have this, this like really, really intense connection to it. And I said out of nowhere, I mean, I'm known to just kind of say whatever comes and it's a big problem, but I was like, you know, when you do that, like it really reminds me of getting raped. And I was like, after I said it, I was just like, oh my God, I can't believe I just said that. And this guy's face, like he was just like, like, you know. <laughs> Poor guy. So he runs out and like, we're all, me and my friends are all laughing about it. And it just kind of, I think was like one of those aha moments where I was just like, you know, I had been raped eight years ago and I was really like, you know, as I, as it's in the film, you know, I go to therapy, I talk about it. I do all the, like the appropriate steps in terms of like what you're supposed to do to heal from that. But you know, eight years ago and here it is, it's, it's seeping out of me, you know? And that was just kind of this moment of like, I'm not over it. And I need to do something about it. And to me, it's always like, let's make a film, you know? So that's kind of how it initially came about. Did you expect a lot of controversy because of the angle you took? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people were like, this is crazy even for you. Like what have, what are you thinking? You know, like I, and I was really, yeah, I was really nervous to make it, but ultimately it's like whenever I have a project for something or like I, my work's really, you know, I like to do comedy and I like to push buttons and it's hard to know like how hard to push. But for me, I just kept coming back. Like I kept coming into myself and like listening to my inner light and being like, I don't know. I think there's a, there is like a really, um, there's a dignity, you know, and like, you know what, like this feels right to me. And for me, that's really all I need, you know, so people can love it and people can hate it. And like both of them affect me, you know, I'm not a robot, but yeah. ultimately like I completely believe in the process of what I did and, and that has to be enough. Have you ever in an abstract way can, thought of what your rapist would think of the, the film or him sitting down to watch it? Oh my God, that's a great question. I don't know if he has good enough taste to watch my movies. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's kind of where the whole movie came from was just this fantasy of wanting to enact this fantasy of being like, you know, mostly out of resentment, but just being like, I fucking spent so much time or I friggin' spent so much time, sorry, like thinking about this dude and what he does and what he thinks and like, does he even understand like, does he even understand, like, like that hour, you know, like, does he even fucking get, like, does he even remember, you know, and so obviously, like, I, I've put a lot of energy into it, but I think making the, what, what making the film really helped me let go of was like, it doesn't really matter because like my truth needs to come from me. I, I can't control, you know, how he feels or what he thinks or why he did what he did. I mean, I can try to rationalize it, but to me, that's just a waste of energy. Like what is empowering to me is to look at the reality of 
how I feel. Like it always comes back to the reality of my feelings. Is that, about it. Is that why you had the, um, the montage of, of you um, spending time with your rapist and then almost like a breakup telling him that you need to go? Um, did that reflect your own real life experience? Yeah. I mean, I'd like to think so. I think part of what I'm trying to show in the film is like, I don't have the answer. I don't have, I want to have the triumphant, like I am, oh, I'm over you. And I want to, you know, my first draft was like circumcising him or castrating him, you know? And I was like, well, like it, it, it as fun as that would be, you know, <laughs> not, it's not the reality to, of my experience. And my experience is like, this has been a really pivotal relationship, you know, like, like other relationships in my life. It's taught me a shitload about myself. I'm not saying I'm glad it happened, but like it has changed me and has strengthened me. It has like, it's almost like connected me to my own like humanness in a way, you know? So it's not, it's not all black and white. Of course, it's a terrible thing. Of course, it's caused me a lot of pain. Of course, it's going to continue to cause me a lot of pain. But it's part of who I am. And I think accepting that is kind of like, okay, like now I can move on. Not forget and not repress, but at least keep going. Right. What do you want people to take away from the film? I think for me, it's like, okay, so like the pushback that I've gotten on this film and why people were like, don't make this and oh my gosh, and this is so offensive and all this stuff is like, hey, wait a minute, why are you so offended? It's like, because people don't want to talk about rape. Mm -hmm. They don't want to talk about it. You know, it's like, do you want to talk about like diarrhea or do you want to talk about rape? Like people would rather like talk in depth about diarrhea, you know, <laughs> or anything rather than rape. And I think like, it's like, you know what? Like that's the problem in and of itself. So I want people to like, I want people to watch my, my hope is that people will watch the film and really honor how they feel about it. Whether that be fucking hating it or wanting to strangle me, which like, trust me, I've totally get it, you know, <laughs> or, you know, being really offended or being really sad or laughing or finding it hilarious. I mean, these are all responses that I've gotten from the film. Like I've gotten everything from like, I, I can't get off the floor. Like I'm so moved by this to people literally like cracking up and being like, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. None of them are wrong. They're all right. Do you see what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. just like allow, I want us to like be able to have a, like a dialogue about rape instead of being like, like the shit that I watch about rape. It's like, okay, rape is bad. Right. Okay. Yeah. Rape is bad. Yeah. 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 Oh no, 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 no. Like, I, well, I'm not a rapist, so I don't need to watch this. It's mm -hmm. like, it's so much bigger of an issue than that. Right. Like it involves all of us, you know, like I'm not frigging Captain Planet, but like, I need to know about <laughs> polar power energy, you know, mm -hmm. I need to know more than it's bad that the planet is getting hot, you know, cause I'm like a human living in the world. So if you know anything about that, <laughs> How did people close to you or your, your parents especially react to the film? Oh my God. My parents are pretty cool. Like, don't tell them I said this, but they're pretty <laughs> cool. They, they can, because I don't know. They, they recognize for me that it's a part of my healing and it's what I needed to do. And, um, yeah, like I think they, they're proud of me and happy for me and, you know, also kind of just really sad for me, you know, and that was part of my scene with the parent scene. It's like, nobody, it's, nobody's the enemy here. Not even the rapist is the enemy. You know, mm -hmm. it's like people just don't, it's like when I told my parents, like they didn't want, they weren't like happy, you know, they were really upset for me. And it's like, that's, it's like them dealing with it. But I guess like what I'm trying to show with my process is like, I need to be ultimately responsible for like how I feel about it. Not my parents, my friends, society, everybody wants me to be okay. But like the truth is like, I'm not, and that's okay. Uh, have you mm. thought about what other films you wanted to direct? Uh, would you, would you like to continue with this? Um, these types of stories um, that are so important. All right. And, and do you want to continue doing, um, comedy I don't really consider like what I do comedy I don't know I don't really like to work from like a genre I just kind of like like when I was thinking about making this film I wasn't like I'm gonna make a funny rape movie I was literally like well what's my experience what's prevented me from getting what have the past eight years looked like and to me that's like how I see the world that's what I see you know so I think in terms of like the stories that I kind of want to tell it's like yeah man like I didn't fucking want to make a movie about rape you know like I didn't want to do that I wanted to make like 
a musical, you know, about me eloping with Ryan Gosling, you know, like I don't, yeah, let's do that. Like I'll do that next. But I just, to, to me, it's like movies are so, I mean, you know, like movies are so hard. They are so hard to make. They take everything out of you. So it's like when I, before I start, it's like, okay, is this story like, I mean, do, I don't have a choice with everything I've made. It's like, well, I don't really have a choice. Like I have to make that. Like I don't, uh, I'd rather, that's scary. That's dangerous. That's going to be really emotionally hard. That's going to be really physically hard. Uh, but I ha but there's that something else that's like, that's just pulling me forward. And that's, those are the kind of stories that I look for. And obviously like, I'm a huge narcissist that I like stories that personally drive me and affect me, you know, and help me understand my own life and my own feelings. So that's, you know, like right now I'm working on a project about homelessness in LA and it's about me dating a homeless guy. Mm -hmm. And it's this whole thing that stems from my personal reality. That's like, well, I've dated every schmuck in LA that has an apartment, you know, and like, what, what am I looking for in somebody else? And you know, the way that I see class and, I think of myself as super down to earth, but you know, there are these people and we're equal, but are we all equal? You know? And so there's these, these questions and it keeps me up at night, mm -hmm. you know? So I might as well friggin' make a movie while I'm up thinking about it. I think it's, I think it's nice that you, you ground your films with your own experiences. So you take these, you know, these, these issues that are really relevant to a lot of other people and then you, you apply it to your own life. How did, uh, how did you come up with the idea of dating a homeless person? Um, I was complaining to my camera guy about like breaking up with my boyfriend, you know, and I'm like, Oh my God, I like miss him so much. And like he had all these needs and I love, you know, I, you know, I love broken men and whatever. And he was like, well, you should just shut up and date a homeless guy. And it's like, we both kind of looked at each other and it's like, Oh yeah. Like that's a movie, you mm -hmm. know? I mean, hold on. Let me make up another version where I think of everything. No, but I mean, like that's but that's the magic of like of this kind of of doing of of this work. You know, it's like oh my gosh, like what I just like stopped the car and I was like, what did you just say? That is genius. You know, and so it's really just about like surrounding myself with people smarter than me. You know, hmm. and uh, speaking of boyfriends, I really loved your story where, th and this was also very trippy. Uh, when you were working on Dude, Where's My Chutzpah? And you ran into an ex-boyfriend on the bus on yeah. the way to um, that site in Israel. So ha have you ever considered making, making a film revolving around that story? Or do you feel like that's done? No, it's never done. Um, why are you a producer? <laughs> I'd you want to find it? That's on the list. <laughs> we should talk. Um, yeah, no, I would love, I love, listen, I love, I've had some crazy ass experiences in Israel. Israel feels like very, I feel very at home there. You know, I feel very myself there. I feel very challenged. It's very passionate. It's very intense. It's very loud. Um, I feel right at home. Um, and I love the idea of being an American girl in Israel. I love like polarity, mm -hmm. you know, like in my chutzpah web series, it was like, no matter if I was with an Orthodox community, a Holocaust survivor in the West bank with Israeli activists with like hip hop stars in outside of television, I'm always the odd man out in every single episode, you know, in every single thing it's like, and in this weird way, like that's how I find out what I, it means to be myself. Mm -hmm. is by going and like getting out of my comfort zone, just get out, you know, because if left up to my own devices, yeah, I'll go to yoga and eat yogurt and chill, you know, and that's great. But like, how am I, how am I going to have these experiences to like make me become myself? If that makes sense. Yeah. And do you, do you feel like there's a pressure, um, to, to accomplish a lot before your, before your thirties considering, you've been compared to, to women like Lena Dunham and uh, who, who has accomplished so much in, in her 20s. Yeah, it's a, really, it's a really annoying question. So good, good question because I'm like annoyed to try to come up with the perfect answer. And yeah, it's, it's, hard, it's really hard to be in this town and it's a very ageist town and it's a very like go, go, go and um, 
get it all done. And yeah, Lena Dunham did this. And if you don't direct a feature by the time you're 30, then I mean, there's all of these like rules. And the only thing that I can say to that is like, I'm really driven by like the creative force and passion and like what I want to do. And that is what's driving me. It's not trying to get a certain amount of stuff done before I'm 30. It's not trying to be Lena Dunham. Like it's just trying to be myself. And as long as I kind of stick to like working on stuff that motivates me and it, it's, it's kind of out of my control, you know, like there's this whole idea of like making it. It's like, what does that even mean? You know, Mm -hmm. like I'm, so I just try to, I kind of try to steer away. I mean, I, I'm human, you know, and I want to be cool and I want people to like me. And But I also kind of have to just really come from the inside out and really start from there. Because if I start thinking like, I want to be successful and I want to have all this and I want to do this by the time I'm 30, my work is going to suck. My my work is going to suck because I've, I've started to work on projects from that point of view and the work has just been shitty. So like, what's the point? Mm-hmm. Do you want to continue doing films or have you considered doing a, a TV series? Yeah, yeah. I'm writing a TV series right now. Um, yeah, that I'm super excited about it and trying to get funding for it. Um, two TV series right now and, and a feature film and would love to kind of explore more long form stuff. But I will say um, I'm having so much fun on the web and playing on the web and people like it weird on the web. I can be myself. <laughs> And I, I see a future, and I think it's a future that's already happening, where it, web, TV, film, it's all really interchangeable, and it's just about content, content, content. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to stick to making the content, and you know, wherever the money is, that's what I'll do. You know? Could you tell me a little more about this um, the series that you're developing? Um, it deals with a young Jewish girl. No. Um, I, uh, you'll have to watch it and find out. Not it's just a hint. Little, like, Um, it's about, it's a, it deals with body issues and, um, and biological clocks. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. I feel like I need another B, bananas. I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah. Yeah. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Just make me sound really thin. (laughs) (laughs) I really, I really enjoyed the film and I, you know, I'm looking forward to your future work. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Send me send me a link and stuff when it's up. I'll I'll pimp it out. Yeah, definitely. Thank okay, so sweetie. Much. Good luck to you. Okay, you too. Thank you so much. Okay, bye.